Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Odo Sendaidekai and this video is a wish list to Bitwig. What would be very nice to see in the near future? Then let's get started. This is about the automation and the time selection of the automation and lifting or lowering up this part of the automation, what is not possible right now. So currently you have to go in here and um, set a point over here, over here, and then two other points over here. Then you can select those points and move them like this down. But this is a whole lot of unnecessary clicking. It would be far better you just select that and then press hold or anything else, then just move it down or move it up like that. Uh, instead of clicking four times into the automation and, uh, and adjusting the whole thing then. It would be nice in automations if you could choose some standard curvatures for selecting some uh, while selecting some regions. So if I, for example, let me choose time selection, like here, you could have uh, like, uh, please uh, draw in a sine wave or um, um, a sawtooth, a triangle up and down and everything, like a little, um, a little menu where, have, where you have so standard things you use a lot or you can use a lot. So you don't have to just do the whole clicking again with clicking here, clicking here, making it like that and then do this curvature and clicking it down again to do this curvature. Instead, it would be far more easier to just say this and put me a, a upside down triangle on there. So this automation feature was already in Bitwig, but then they removed it for some reason. I don't know why. So there was a function where you can just select um, a part of the automation, for example, like this, then normal duplicate it, and then you could reverse that. But this was removed, and sometimes it's really handy to to just can that you just can re, uh, reverse the automation, so you can use it for for musical reasons. So it would be really nice to see that reverse function again. When you are bouncing, for example, a clip something in in this um, track over here, and the track name is Belly Bells, so. If you just um, bounce now in a new track, for example, like that, then the audio track that is created should be named like as well belly bells or audio belly bells or something, not audio two. So because if you use that in a separate track, you have to go in there and say, okay, this is the same. So this is unnecessary that can a computer do for you. So you are very organized with all of your tracks. This would be nice to have. Another nice feature of Bitwig is the commander that you can get when you um, press Control and Enter. So you can search for some things you want to do, for example, let me say launcher. And it would be really nice if you found your function, like for example, mixer zoom in all tracks. It would be very nice to that you can um, set the shortcut directly here. So if this has no shortcut, you could just click on it and say, okay, I want to have a shortcut um, for that function. So like a right click or something that you can set your shortcut or that you leads directly into the settings of the shortcuts directly to the thing you were um, currently looking at. This would be very nice. With the device lane over here, down here, um, when you add a device, like for example, I add a reverb for that. And normally if you add a device, you want to work on that. And it's very annoying that the device opens up on the right space where you don't have access to it. So you have to um, scroll to the device to see it. 
And this is very annoying and would be really great if you add a device, it scrolls automatically here. Or for example, in the middle, so you're, you're not stuck at this, but that's an advanced feature. So, but it would be very handy if it would come over here and if you open the one of the containers, you want to work on the containers so you don't have to um, scroll as well. So that it the automatically scrolling would be a very nice feature to just avoid just more mouse clicks and everything. Another nice feature for the device lane would be if the cursor key navigation would be better. So currently you can go with uh, the arrow keys right left between the devices but you can't reach the plus between the devices. So what you can do actually is just to select one device, press T to select the track again, then press B for browser and add for example an empty device and this empty device is added at the end of the device so it would be really nice that the navigation with the cursor keys you could say okay i'm here and for example i can press shift b or something that it adds in front of the device or b at the end of the device and that you can for example as well um, navigate into the containers itself so like uh, cursor key down or up or something like that there are multiple ways to do that it would um, increase uh, the accessibility as well and um, it would increase as well the workflow where you don't have to switch from keyboard to mouse and back again. So the next wish is the device dynamics. This is a fairly old uh, compressor, but um, a really nice compressor. But there's one thing that is a little bit difficult, not for beginners as well, for advanced people to be very precise with uh, setting up the compressor. And this is, I play simple melody over here. You see this compression indicator, it's something between my minus 20 minus 30 but you never know exactly depends on what you are dialing in but you never exactly know and if you if you just want to cut like a db or half a db it's really difficult and you have to fiddle around with um, this indication to see what is it without a uh, compressor what is it with a uh, compressor this is tedious and um, the second compressor of bitwig has already such uh, indication so this stays for a little while so you see exactly what you're doing you can set the threshold exactly where you want it so you get exactly the the um, region and uh, the amount you want to have with your compression. So this would be very nice if you would add such an indication to um, the other Dynamics compressor. And speaking of uh, this compressor over here that is uh, labeled in the online help as a feedback topology compressor, but there's nothing in the manual, so it would be nice to update the manual as well. I assume the Dynamics is a feed forward compressor, but I don't know because there's nothing written about that. But coming back to the compressor, it would be nice to have here, because it is a feedback topology compressor, to have a side chain with that compressor too. So like you have here. Um, this would um, increase a little bit the probabilities to use it as a glue compressor. So and another thing is the EQ plus. The first one is that it shouldn't stop the sound when inserting an EQ. And another one, a very handy feature would be you can um, use your mouse to just select, for example, something like a low cut over here. So, and um, the standard is that you get a two pole uh, low cut with 12 dB, but there are also 6 dB, uh, 24 and so on. A very nice feature would be that you just hold down the number like one, two, four, six. Do we have even more? I forgot about it, eight, for example, down. And then you get 
if you pre hold down the one you get the one pole filter or if you hold down six you get initially the six pole filter this would be very nice and the same is um, with the high cut filter where you also have some one to eight um, pole filters <music> With the MIDI CC device, I think it needs a little bit of refurbishing because um, this text field seem to be like Bitwig 2.0 or something. But that's okay. That's not my, my point. The point is if you uh, use this to input some um, words or something and you create the remote pages, it should take over these things and not K1 value because um, there are several um, controllers on the market that have a display and then you see on the display k1 value and sometimes it's really nice to have an idea and information what is this knob about because you can't look at the uh, screen all the time or your setup is a little bit different so um, you you can't see the screen sure you can still put it in over here but that should be done by a computer because if you just click it and hold it so this would be a really nice feature so there is this device oscilloscope and uh, there's a really nice feature in there where you can put in two devices like i have here the kick on a and the base on b and then you can see these two tracks where you can fiddle around um, about the, the uh, that there is no phase shift or something so but it would be really nice if there's a, something like a beat sync so you could put that like that you see it like on such a basis for example and don't have to fiddle around from how, how big is the screen over here so you always have the say this uh, tedious fiddling around with the numbers until you get it a little bit correct so you could now just do something over here and in the with a face uh, with the face four to adjust that and if you put it in big you have like a different display so it would be nice to have over here like a beat sync so you get this initially and you don't have to fit around here and if you um, make it big and maximize it you should have the same view not a different view not more on there that you see here for example this would be very nice Then there is the device FM4 and with the FM4 is a um, FM modulation synthesizer but it uses triangle waves and it would be really nice to have sine waves on this device as well that you can modulate with several things this matrix over here. Um, this is right now not possible. This would be a great um, feature to have uh, for the whole FM modulation part. Regarding the browser, for example, it would be really nice if you can multi-select things. So sometimes I want to, uh, I know that I want to add an EQ like this, for example, and then I, it would be nice to, I don't know, just tag it or something or click on it. And then I want to add, for example, a reverb, then add this, for example, and for example put a delay um, at the end so this is what i i want to have in my device lane because i know i want to add them anyways so currently i have to just open the browser select it and open the browser again select it take some other things it's okay and this is just this repeating thing and it would be really nice if there's a kind of way to multi-select several devices or plugins so you can just add them in one go.
Bitwix modulation system is outstanding, but I would sometimes have to have some more control over it. So if I have just automated the filter with two LFOs and just trying things out and stuff, um, it would be really nice if I could just bounce that whole modulation down of the LFOs, everything what's what's moving all um, of the knobs should love to be able to bounce that down. There is a way to do that in a very complicated way. I did uh, for that two videos already, but it would be nice to just have, okay, I want to bounce all the automations in that clip. And then I can adjust some parameters. For example, I want to have a repetition over um, three clips. And in the fourth clip, I want a different uh, modulation in some parts or in all parts or something. And this is really difficult to create without you have the automation. Speaking of modulators, it would be really nice sometimes to, if you can lock the modulators. So just have here like a lock and if you change, for example, the preset, the um, modulator just stays there, even if it loses the target um, because you you change the device or something or the plugin, for example, because sometimes you have for example, this expression uh, pedal over here. And every time I, I go to another device or, or anything, I have to or change the preset. I have to add that again. And this would be very nice um, that you can keep, for example, something like this modulator over here or, or any other modulator, because you know already that you want to modulate something with an LFO or with a step sequencer, for example, or any other modulator as well. So, Something like a lock feature that you can lock this um, um, this modulator as long you are exchanging the presets or, for example, the devices from this perspective. And another nice feature for modulators would be when you're wiggling around, for example, with the filter cutoff. And you know, okay, I want to have a modulator, for example, LFO over here, that you can right click and add a modulator over here. You don't have to go over here, just use, just select the LFO, then press this and then um, modulate that parameter. So it'd be really nice if you just can add a modulator over here, like another menu entry or something. Then it adds the, the modulator over here and the modulator is already then in active modulation um, uh, mood. <laughs> so that you instantly can start modulating because often you, you use some standard modulation things or you know, okay, I want to modulate something over here and then you can go to the detail settings for example, and adjust the details in the settings because that's they are called detail settings. Another one is with using um, plugins. So if I use a plugin, for example, like uh, Hi from Yuhi, and I just did some changes over here, then I use a lot the spacebar the blank key to start the transport. But in Bitwig, it's not possible to start that, but it should be possible. I always have to go with a mouse over here. or have to use a controller and press play over here. But normally my keyboard is in front of me and the fastest way to do that is, is just to play blank key or the space bar and oops, and um, not to use the mouse again or reach out to another controller. So please add that, that would be very, very handy and useful. So with the clips, if you have a clip like um, I have here and you want to just uh, reuse one part of the clip, you can just uh, take it over here and create a copy, for example, over here. So what you now have is uh, you have a copy of that, but you don't have all notes in that part of the, of the clip. So if you click on that, you see this selection. And if I highlight that, 
parts of the notes are starting in uh, before that selection. We have some more notes, and um, some are starting in that selection. And the big problem is you don't see all the notes that are in the selection, only those who start in that selection. So this is kind of okay, but um, if you now go in there and press Ctrl J, you still have for consolidate, you still, where is it here, over here, you still have a lot of notes in there, but only two are displayed and played. So you can um, press um, again, for example, like I have to select that, like um, the split control E and this still the same. So it's, it's doing nothing. So the best thing would be if you really want to have this um, clip at its own that all the notes that are happening inside regardless if they are starting outside the notes are just cut over here for example like i would use a cut uh, a knife to um, cut it over here then you see them appearing here and they are played as well so and if i want to um, consolidate it it should cut everything on the left side and on the right side away so that I uh, that I'm just left with maybe where is it let's do that this is all the the manual tasks you always have to do because the computer is not doing the work so no still not like this so now you see all notes and all notes are displayed and you have a real representation of that the same goes with if you select something over here then press ctrl e to split it like that then you get everything but um over here but if you move that everything in the clip after that is coming is empty even <laughs> if in this clip are still notes but then it's empty because you split it over here. So here it would be really nice to just make some more logical functions that you can that you can use in a way that you like in in an audio for example if you if I cut something here out the audio doesn't disappear at the end it just plays at that point again so more like um, cleaning up operations in in this whole um, joining and splitting um, functions or just taking things out over here for example um, there are still the notes in there but they are not displayed and they're not played so this should be or this would be a very nice feature that this editing process would be a little bit more complete and speaking of clips so there's an just a visual part maybe but it's, it's not that logical if you just grab with the mouse a clip and move it around the original clip stays but if you move something it shouldn't stay there and there's a second copy over there so if I hold down control, I create a copy and that's okay. But if I want to move a clip, it should not stay there like visually. So if I just let, uh, just drop it here in, in this location, um, this is like, um, yeah, like in the beginning you think it's like a, a copy you're moving but you're moving the original as soon as you let go you see okay it was not a copy it was the original one but this is like a i would say a visual glitch and it would be nice to remove that or just to clean up this feature <laughs> So the next one is with recording clips. There are several um, occasions where you want to overdub, for example, um, a clip. And you can do that by just, I put a, a loop over here, put that on recording. So now this is recording. And I could type in some notes, for example. But you see when it's repeating, I can't see my own notes anymore. 
because it's running out of the clip or something. So I have to click it again, but at the end. Okay, sometimes, sometimes it comes back, sometimes not, you never know. But in a lot of occasions you can't see anything. And uh, something similar is happening if you use bar over here and use punch in, punch out with my clip. Now play. To play from the beginning, sorry. For example, in a lot of cases, the editor just disappeared and you can't see your own notes. So, um, what I had here is I had the original clip that is cut now. Maybe that's okay, I don't know with punch in, punch out. Then I have the second clip with my notes that I couldn't see when I recording them. And then I have the, the third clip. That's not a big deal because I can join them again Then everything is in one clip. But there should be a more practical logic so you don't have to do such after work like joining everything and if you're playing that and then the the, the display um, is removed or you can't see what's what's going on and so on. This should be more like user-friendly, like um, help you to record something. Another one with clips is in the clip launcher itself. And it's there um, need to be another shortcut for something because if you're on a clip like that, you can move around here and select the clip. And to start the clip, you just press the uh, blank key. Sorry, I have to activate that. So to to um, start this clip, you just have to press um, the blank key, for example. Uh, the enter key, sorry, the enter key. So, but there is no way to stop that clip with the keys. I have to use this one, the mouse or something, to stop it again. And it would be really nice that I'm able to stop that clip with just uh, if I have some other clips here running, for example, like this, I have always go to my mouse and stop that. Or I have to use a controller that is able to to organize and control the, all those clips, for example. But just having a, a key, I didn't find one in the commander or in the shortcuts to just stop such a clip. That would be very nice. Editing notes with the keyboard, for example. I have here a note and I want to add some other notes. So I press Ctrl D to make a duplicate of it and again and again and again and using the arrow keys to just put them somewhere. And for example, here and for example here wonderful melody so i can move between all those um, notes i can select several one and if i think like okay maybe this note is not that good i delete it with um, delete and now I have a big problem because i'm off the grid now i'm off the the editor i can't go in there again and this would be really nice if i just hold down like I do the Alt key and the, the arrow and it just selects me one of the next or previous uh, notes from the one I, I um, deleted right now. So what I have to do is have just to go back to the mouse, select a note and then I can navigate again. This would be, would be really nice if there would be a way to not reach out for the mouse to just select the next or the previous one with Alt and arrow keys or something or just the arrow keys or I don't know, something like that. So um, you are not off the editor again. When adding a new track, for example, I'm adding a new um, instrument track 
where is it? Yeah, add, sorry. Add an Instagram track. I'm just added to add a new device or a new plugin or something. So it would be really nice if if I could configure from in the settings, for example, that if I add a device or for example with a shortcut, the browser automatically pops up over here. Because that's in most cases, uh, in most scenarios, the case I want to do. I want to open the browser and then just type in search, for example, and the search XT synthesizer is loaded or any other Bitwig device, for example. You can do that already with whole pressing that plus over here in the track list, then you get the browser. But then if you if you add something like, for example, the drum machine, you have to take this one and put it somewhere over here. So better is you are already in the place, say, oh, I need another instrument that just supports my current instrument. Press Control T or some other shortcut or just add something and then the browser pops up automatically, for example. So another thing is that I'm a manual reader, I confess. <laughs> Even if the manual from Bitwig is a little thin, but um, sometimes I would want to um, assure that I'm doing the right thing. You um, surely have the, why do I have something? I don't have any device anymore. Um, surely you have the online help over here, but the manual normally has a little bit more to tell than just an online help. So currently you're going into the dashboard over here, then going to help, then going to documentation, waiting, waiting because it's searching the internet, then clicking on here, and then it downloads the whole documentation, like this here. And the documentation is about, I forgot it, like 16, 60 megabytes, 60 megabytes, for example. And that's okay because you always get the newest uh, documentation for that, but there are ways to just um, do that in a better way. So it would be nice to have the documentation right on place because sometimes you don't have an internet connection or you don't want to have an internet connection. Sometimes your internet connection is so weak in Germany, that is often the case, so that you have wait very long time, like five minutes or 10 minutes, you get 60 megabytes from, from the internet. And this would be really better to just open a local one, even if it's two days old or something. And there are ways to just check if you have an internet connection, is there a newer one? <laughs> Another nice feature would be if you can um, add an, an album cover image. For example, over here down there, go in the project panel and on the info you can add the title, artist name and everything. And it would be nice to have here a um, file choose or something where you can add a JPEG or a PNG file. And when you export the file to FLAC or MP3 or anything else that have um, ID, uh, um, ID V3, or two, um, it would be added automatically. So your exported file has already a cover image for that. I use that a lot because I like to have cover images on my songs and this would be a really nice feature. And maybe to extend that cover image wish, it would be really nice if uh, when you export your, your track, export audio you you um if there would be like um an option to add um, mp4 and this mp4 just uses this cover image this is no really big deal because this is just a, a parameter on ffmpeg where you say okay just export my flag file or my mp3 file to an mp4 file and here's the image just do that and this was very nice because then you are able to just upload your export from Bitwig to some video portals like Vimeo, YouTube, Peertube or something else. This would be really, really great.
And speaking of exporting parameters, <laughs> when you export your audio, you get a standard like, um, if I do that right now, I get a standard um, of the title and the date and the um, current clock and so on. But it would be really nice if you could just um, define all that export string with all the parameters you have here, inclusive, inclusive, uh, inclusive the comment section. So you would have the title, your artist name, for example, the album name at the beginning, then maybe the year, the genre, and you could use the comment section for putting in something like the BPM and the key you're using. So every export would have the same format for you where you have everything in there. And this is really handy as well when you're exporting stems. For example, collaborating with someone or that you send the stems to people who want to reuse them so they know um, so in the in the names is everything in there like the um, the title the artist the key the bpm and everything and one thing is here as well with the export um, bitwig does some numbering with the export that is not available over here so this would be as well nice to just remove that numbering don't know where that comes from but this is really annoying when you export something and part of your of your tracks are numbered, for example, not the FX tracks that are not numbered in, in a way. So just remove that numbering or, or do it like you see it over here, but really from in a group way wise, or I don't know. But I think the most easiest way would be just to remove that numbering. Another wish that comes from Yona from our community B was in the FX grid or in the polygrid for the sidechain to have a look ahead function. So um, for more complex uh, grid patches, this would be very handy. And another wish from Yona from Community B is something like a track wise um, CPU usage. Maybe that you can see that in the inspector or somewhere. So sometimes um, you're building up your track, and one time you, you notice that something is eating up all your CPU. And this would be really a nice feature to have a quick view on which track this is happening. So um, you could see like, okay, I have here a lot of stuff going on. What's going on over here to bounce it down to audio or do something else to reduce the CPU load. Just a little small helper, but very useful. Another wish from Community P as well from um, Yona is the grid lines over here. So um, it would be helpful if the grid lines could be aligned with the global shuffle. So if you enable um, the groove or the shuffle over here, so that the grid lines are aligned to this so that you can switch from this view to the shuffle view because sometimes it's a little bit hard to see um, when you have nodes over here they are always aligned on the normal grid lines and you want to see for example that they are shuffled in a way or that maybe the nodes should be moved from the shuffle and the grid lines stay like that but that you have a visual indication that something happening here, because if you use the shuffle um, on those nodes, on a clip or on several clips, um, you don't hear what you see. There's some gap in between hearing and seeing what's happening. And this could be in a very complex environment, very disturbing and confusing. So, and another thing is you can add here a real-time ruler if you could switch between the, um, the uh, grid lines from the normal 
grid raster to the um, time raster, like uh, to the seconds. So you could just um, look at everything in seconds instead of um, bars or um, such things. Another wish from Yona from Community B is something like a Compressor Plus device. We have a lot of Plus devices over here and the Compressor Plus device is something like um, a specialized uh, glue compressor where some things are already built in like saturation or um, different algorithms and some more help to um, for so that you uh, can have a faster workflow with um, some settings that you always can reuse and where you can just say, okay, I have some algorithms over here to glue my track in a, in a um, different or in the same way that I did in my last track. A wish from Manuel J from Community B is something that you can um, set up the um, transparency of the clips so you are able to see the grid lines behind the clips. Sometimes this is a little is a helper, a visual helper, so you see if the nodes are in the right, right place or what is what is happening over here. So something like a trans transparency mode um, so that you can see the grid lines behind the clips. And the last wish from Manuel Jot from Community B is that um, a lot of people want to have is like um, um, color schemes or skins um, for Bitwig so that they can just personalize or adjust some colors for their own taste. So that's, I see that all over um, the forums that a lot of people like that and want to have that. And um, this should be the last wish in this whole video. So, that were some of the collected wishes for Christmas. And I want to thank all of the Bitwig team for this wonderful DAW that is not only available for Windows and Mac, but also for Linux. I think this was a very smart decision in the beginning, not only because its availability made me very happy, but also I'm very convinced that we see in the future a lot more professional music production happening in Linux. For that, I am also preparing some videos. And not to forget, I wish you all watching this video a very peaceful time at the end of this year. Be kind to each other. Subscribe to all the Bitwig content creators like Jürgen Moosgraber, Polarity, Tesh Teaches and more and give them a thumb up to every video you are watching so that the community will grow even more. Now to say it in the words of Jürgen, driven by Moss, Moosgraber, make some funky music. My name is Odo Sendai Thank you for your time and attention and I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, take care, see you then. Ciao, ciao.